But okay, so you kind of mentioned that the Iranian yeah, elections yeah. will be happening, the presidential elections this summer. And just to recap very quickly, so right now we have Rouhani, who's the, Rouhani, who's the president of Iran, and so he's finishing his second term, and, and that's that for him. Just, just a quick recap. Yeah. Rouhani is a, like an overview recap. Rouhani is a, <clears throat> is a centrist himself, but he did come to power on the back of popularity of a uh, reformist camp because they endorsed him and he seemed to endorse their positions. And now, uh, considering the economic situation and uh, many, many, many other things that happened during the last four years, probably some, some of the more eventful years of, you know, uh, in, in politics, you know, everybody's everybody, I would say, I would say more than 80% of population are extremely unhappy with the governance and the current government. So now the, most analysts guess that a conservative figure will win the next election. And the supreme leader has hinted that he's in favor of a young and revolutionary government. And because they, interestingly, there is a fight within the reformist camp now. Some people say we should distance ourselves from Rouhani. Some people say that no, he, we, you know, we, uh, he did what, like what was best, and you know, um, there couldn't be anything else, or not much better could have been done. So you know, uh, that's happening. At the same time, uh, you know, uh, two people officially have announced that they're running. One is uh, Hossein Dehqan, a former Air Force officer with the rank of Brigadier General and a former uh, Minister of Defense. He was <clears throat> he was a Minister of Defense for actually Rouhani's government, and he's somebody with a military background, which is uh, something which is extremely rare within Iranian politics. Whether it was presidential system or prime ministerial system, there has been a quite a you know, line, it's a convention, it's not necessarily a law. It's a convention, there's a big line between the military and the civilian, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> lines, uh, civilian life. So, you know, we don't have many military people, you know, becoming prime ministers or uh, presidents. I don't think we have any. But this is sort of, this, so this is a bit of a break with tradition, uh, especially because Khomeini, the Iranian original leader of the revolution, was somebody who was very much against any military uh, presence within the politics. So that's quite interesting. He's officially running. Mohsen Rezai, who is a former, um, you know, member of Sepah, but he's been, he's been, uh, he, he's been in politics for many years and he's been a candidate for many, many presidential elections. In a way, he's a bit of a joke that, you know, they say, um, there's a joke, uh, they, uh, they used to say that, you know, when he was a kid, they asked him, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he said he wanted to be a candidate, you know, <laughs> or he wanted to be nominated. So he's been in many elections. He's a former uh, head of, he was a head of Sepah during the war, but he hasn't wear his military uh, clothing for many years until last two years. Uh, again, he has started wearing it. So these two are officially running. Many other people are being talked about. The young Minister of um, Communication and Technology, uh, Azariya Jahrami. There is another guy, Mehrdad Basrpash, the head of a state auditing or organization who's been positioned as this um, as this uh, figure who's fighting corruption, uh, you know, within the. Uh, within the government you know they are being talked about there are a couple of other people being talked about but um, you know <clears throat> Zarbami the former head of uh, Iranian uh, state television but no, besides those two I said nobody's have nobody has announced that they're officially running and many many reformist candidates or more moderate candidates probably won't run this time around because they have realized that this time around there's going to be lower turnout and uh, the people are so fed up with the government that they are probably going to vote for for a change candidate, which would be a conservative or perhaps or nationalistic candidate rather than a reformist centrist candidate. 
Okay, very interesting. So I'm guessing that the main, I guess, the main issues at stake this time around will just be like the state of the Iranian economy and like corruption or things like that. The main uh, issues is going to be these kind of typical domestic issues. Yeah, to, to be honest, in Iran, uh, not just in Iran, but more so in yeah. Iran, you can't really, in because majority of Iranians or at least significant parts of the middle class connect the current economic situation to the relationship with the West or relationship mm -hmm. with the foreign countries. So that would be a big part of it. And uh, but unless, like, you know, a significant number of people want rec reconciliation with the USA. And But so those I kind of people would rather vote for someone like Rouhani, like whoever follows him. Sh but that's the thing, though. I don't think this time around they believe like because they feel yeah. so badly betrayed by Rouhani, they don't feel like. I doubt m most of them would vote for his continuity candidate or for mm -hmm. somebody from that camp. Uh, and so to be honest, Trump, uh, Trump did great damage to American credibility, and many people may just feel like whoever is the U.S. president, maybe in four years, Trump is gonna come back or somebody will come back, and so, yeah. you know, yeah. So how will these candidates kind of differentiate themselves from each other and Rouhani kind of, you think, what are they going to mainly talk about? Oh, they, they pro I have no idea, but they, I mentioned some of them, the people like Azaria Jahrami, I mentioned he's a reformist type centrist figure. The, <clears throat> the guy who I said is going to go uh, for anti-corruption sort of uh, fig like uh, <laughs> campaign mode thingy. He's more on the conservative side, so I think uh, you know. Uh, uh, the, you know, the, I think this time around there is the conservatives are not gonna have much competition, and there is gonna be a, a you know competition on who's more nationalistic, and who's more uh, anti-corrupt, basically anti-corruption. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Any anything else to talk about when it comes to Iran, Iranian? relations with the United States, other countries in the region, or should we move on to a second story? No, uh, no, nothing much else, except that uh, hopefully we'll do a more, uh, you know, more deeper analysis on Iranian candidates and Iranian election. It's just that right now there, nobody, except the two I mentioned, have uh, nobody has officially announced. Oh, one thing I do can add, Mr. Zarif, the Iranian foreign minister and the head of judiciary, Ibrahim Raisi, they've both uh, ruled out running, and they were both two people that were very much thought to uh, be thinking about it or thought to have a good chance of winning if they ran. So you know uh, that's about it. But we'll get we'll come back to you with some more updates when there are actually some uh, you know developments.